Chapter 61 Brotherly Advice You are listening at NovelFull.audio Earned the right. That was similar to what Tom had said too. And what if she doesn't want to? Lucy asked anxiously. Well, it's her choice. I'm certain her driver would not force himself on her. I'm just saying if she is going to pick someone, then it can as well be the person she picked the first time, Lucas said reasonably. What if? Lucy, let's stop playing around now. I know you well enough to know you wouldn't call me to ask about a colleague's friend that means nothing to you. You called because this is bothering you, and it's only bothering you this much because you're probably attracted to him. Am I wrong? Lucas asked. I'm not attracted to him. You can't convince me otherwise. I've been with you all our lives, so I know you better than anyone else. And honestly, I'm glad that there is someone you feel this way about even. I don't feel any way about him, Lucy cut in. Even though I'm sure you're going to stubbornly hold on to your decision of not getting involved with any guy, Lucas continued as though she hadn't interrupted him. Tell me something, why can't you just let yourself have a little fun? He asked in a concerned tone. Lucy sighed in resignation. There was no point arguing with him or trying to convince him otherwise. Lucas was very stubborn and once he believed something, he held on to it like a dog to a bone, he liked someone else. He told you that, didn't he? Yes. Is he dating this person? Have you met her? Lucas asked thoughtfully. Not yet. Do you know if he has made his feelings known to her? He asked again. No he hasn't, Lucy said, wondering why Lucas was asking so many questions. Does it bother you that he likes someone else? Lucas asked thoughtfully. Of course not. He even asked me to help him get the lady. I'm not interested in him, honest to God. He asked her to help him get the lady, and then he was also asking her to have an affair with him. Something didn't add up about the story. He had a feeling that the person the guy liked was Lucy and not any other lady. It was probably best he keeps the knowledge to himself since he knew Lucy well enough to know that the moment she suspects the guy likes her, she would run in the opposite direction. You told him you're not interested in guys. Lucas asked thoughtfully. Of course I did. I don't want him getting wrong ideas. And he offered to be your first lover, am I right? Lucas asked, making Lucy cringe in embarrassment. There used to be a time when she and Lucas talked about everything possible. He had even confided in her the first time he had sex with Rachel while they were in high school. Now she felt awkward talking to him about this. Yes. Can you stop asking me so many awkward questions and just tell me what you think I should do? Lucy asked impatiently. From everything she had said, Lucas had gotten all the information he needed to confirm his suspicions. It was probably fate that had brought her and this guy together, and he was in love with Lucy. But because she didn't want a relationship he had offered to be her lover while also making her let down her guard by leading her to believe that he was interested in someone else. He liked the guy already. I know this is likely going to be a bad idea, but I'm going to give it anyway. Since you're not looking for a serious relationship, but you obviously want a lover, wouldn't it be better to get involved with someone you know, and are attracted to? Someone who isn't interested in your heart but just your body. Lucas asked even though he doubted the man Lucy was talking about wanted only her body. Lucy pursed her lips as she gave it a thought, maybe. Good. So you should probably stop thinking about it too much and tell your colleague's friend to give it a try, he added jocularly. Why do I feel like you're saying this only because you want me to get involved with someone at all cost? Lucy asked suspiciously. I'm saying this only because I love you, and I want you to be happy. Besides, I will feel better knowing you have someone out there who is looking out for you. So think about it, please. All right. I will think about it. You can't tell either mom or dad about this, Lucy warned. You know I won't. Your secret is safe with me, Lucas promised. You can't tell Rachel either, Lucy added, making Lucas pause. I know you still don't like her much, but can you please try harder? 
Lucas asked in a low tone so that Rachel wouldn't know they were talking about her. I don't have to like her. You are the one who is in a relationship with her, not me, Lucy pointed out. We are one, remember. You are my twin sister and I really want you both to get along, Lucas pleaded. You should have thought of that before getting involved with her after she tried to cause confusion between us, Lucy said grudgingly. She was only a teenager then. She has changed a lot since high school, I promise. I'm not promising anything, but I will try, Lucy said with a yawn. That reminds me, Rachel and I have picked a date for our wedding, Lucas announced. Oh. Already. Lucy asked in surprise. She had thought they were probably just going to remain engaged for some time while living together. Yes. We will be getting married in a month. And I'm hoping you won't come alone, Lucas said, making Lucy roll her eyes. Since when did you start sounding like mom? Lucy asked dryly making Lucas chuckle. So what is his name? Lucas asked curiously. Lucy feigned a yawn, I need to sleep now, and I'm sure you have to return to your darling fiancé. Good night. I love you, Lucy said and hung up without waiting for Lucas to respond. What had she been expecting? She should have known Lucas would say this. Both her mother and Sonia, and maybe her father too, would also have said the same thing, because they all wanted her to get involved with a man. She sighed as she lay down on her bed and shut her eyes as though shutting out all the thoughts in her head. She would just think about it tomorrow, even though she wasn't looking forward to facing Tom. Chapter 62 Whose Brother? You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Good morning, Miss Perry. Did you have a good night's rest? Tom greeted politely when Lucy joined him by the car the following morning. She wasn't wearing her glasses as instructed and her long black hair fell around her shoulders in cascades. She was dressed in a peach dot colored suit, with white camisole inside, and a white handbag on her right wrist to match the white stiletto heels on her feet. Lucy blinked at him for a moment as if she wasn't sure he was talking to her. Had last night been a dream? Or perhaps he had been on hard drugs? Lucy wondered as she stared at him. Taking a closer look at him, she noticed the amusement in his eyes. It definitely wasn't a dream. He was trying to mess with her mind. Now that she was certain it was her he was speaking to, she tried to wear a straight face, good morning. I slept well. Thank you, Lucy said curtly, without bothering to inquire about his night. After the attitude he had put up the previous evening, she wasn't sure she could trust him to answer her questions without a hint of sexual undertones in his words. He seemed like an entirely different person to her now. Once Lucy woke up that morning, she had made up her mind to hold off Tom's advances for as long as she could. That would give her ample time to help him get his mystery lady. That way he wouldn't want to have sex with her and risk jeopardizing his relationship. If possible she was going to find the woman he liked and even become close friends with her. That way he wouldn't risk coming too close to her. Dot Lucy got into the back seat of the car this time, as though trying to remind Tom that she was his boss and expected him to treat her as such. Tom got the message loud and clear. He was beginning to enjoy the chase. Maybe this was why it was said that men loved to chase women who were difficult to get. Her attitude was only going to make the victory sweeter when eventually she succumbs to his temptation. Tom had a smirk on his face but said nothing as he turned on the car's ignition and drove off. Tom kept stealing glances at her through the rearview mirror until she met his gaze once, are you nervous? Tom asked, making her raise a brow. Am I supposed to be? One edge of Tom's lips curved in a smile when he noted that she had regained control of her emotions. He liked that, and it made him want to ruffle her feathers, I don't know. I overheard Mr. Harry say something about the CEO coming to work today. He said making Lucy's heart skip a beat as she sat up involuntarily, the CEO. She asked nervously, and Tom gave her a nod. Why didn't you mention it yesterday? I thought you were aware. I only just realized that you had no idea, sorry. It's fine, 
Lucy said thoughtfully. Perhaps she could ask Sonia to find out what she could about her boss from his brother. And also get a picture if possible. She deserved to know the face of the freak she was working for. Speaking of Sonia, Lucy realized that she was yet to hear from Sonia since she said she was on her way to visit Brian, so she immediately unlocked her phone to dial Sonia's line, but smiled when Sonia's call came in at that same moment, were you spying on me? Or do you read minds now? I was just about to dial your line, Lucy said, making Sonia smile. That's why I'm your soulmate baby. Good morning, Sonia said with a yawn as she walked out of the house dressed in a red bikini and carrying one of Brian's towels. She had woken up earlier than Brian, thanks to her poor sleeping habit which seemed to be her curse as a writer. You're still in bed. Lucy asked curiously, wondering why she called if she was still sleepy. No. I'm up and on my way to the swimming pool. I'm sorry I couldn't call to let you know about my trip. I arrived safely and then we went out and returned really late and wasted. Lucy pursed her lips, wasted. I suppose things are going well between you two. Lucy asked dryly. Well, you could say so. Don't worry about me, I'm just going to seduce him while trying to get inspiration for the story I'm working on at the moment. The plan is simple though, it's either he gives me his heart or he gives me a baby, Sonia said with a mischievous smile. While at the club with him the previous evening she had made up her mind on this. Her ability to change her mind on what she wanted at every minute was one of her biggest flaws. Lucy's brows creased in worry, are you sure that is what you want? You shouldn't do something you might end up wishing you didn't do, Lucy said in a concerned tone like the good girl she was. Hearing the concern in her tone Tom glanced at her through the rearview mirror as he tried to guess who she was speaking with. Her brother. Or her best friend. Don't worry about me. I'm a big girl, and you know it. So what about you? How is your driver? Sonia asked making Lucy's eyes flicker to the rearview mirror where she met Tom's eyes. She quickly looked away. I'm in the car. On my way to work, Lucy said, hoping Sonia would get the message. Oh. Okay then. I was going to ask, could you help me find out what you can about my boss? Lucy asked, not noticing the curious expression that appeared on Tom's face when he heard her. His ears had pricked at her words. Oh. So now you want me to be a loudmouth and tell Brian about you working for his brother, right? Sonia asked dryly, reminding her that just the previous day she had asked her not to say a word to Brian about her. I'm not asking you to tell him I work for his brother. Just extract information from him. It would be better if you can get me pictures too, Lucy suggested as Tom drove into the parking lot of the company. Whose brother? Who was she talking about? Tom mused as he listened in on her conversation. Chapter 63 What the heck? You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Whose brother? Him. Who was she talking to? And who were they talking about? Tom mused as he listened in on her conversation. Sonia paused her lips thoughtfully, well, I will see what I can do for you. Call me when you're alone and can talk about your super hot driver, Sonia said before they both hung up. Who were you talking to? You know someone who knows the boss. Tom asked as he parked the car. He didn't bother to hide the fact that he had eavesdropped on her conversation. Of course, he had heard her. If she didn't want him to hear her conversation she wouldn't have made the call in his presence. He wasn't sitting on top of his ears, and he definitely hadn't left his ears at home. She had made the call in front of him, so it was only fair that she satisfy his curiosity. Lucy met his gaze in the rearview mirror, and she looked at him as if she was contemplating whether or not to share such a classified information with him. At least this was a normal conversation between friends when compared to what he had done the previous evening. She was going to keep treating him as a friend regardless of what he says or does. That way he would get used to being a friend and stick to the friend zone, Lucy reasoned. After a moment's hesitation, she finally said, you can keep a secret, right? You can't tell anyone else about this. 
can I trust you? I'm sure you know you can, Tom said, and Lucy leaned a bit forward in her seat as if she was scared someone else might hear what she wanted to say. Remember my best friend, Sonia. She is engaged to Brian Hank, the CEO's younger brother, Lucy said in a whisper, making the hair on Tom's neck stand on end. Maybe if she looked close enough, she would notice the goosebumps that had appeared on his exposed arm at her words. What the heck? How had this happened? Of all the ladies in the world, his younger brother was engaged to Lucy's best friend. Did Brian possibly know Lucy? There was no way this was a coincidence like the rest, coincidences, since he hadn't planned for this to happen. He would have been busted even before he started. Tom reasoned in his head, as he tried to maintain a neutral expression. Luckily the surprise on his face was real even though it was for a different reason from what Lucy was thinking. You're surprised, right? Lucy asked with a small smile. Wow. I'm very surprised. It's a very small world, isn't it? Lucy decided to leave out the part that it was a fake engagement, and nodded her head, yes, it is. So maybe she can help me to get his pictures. I think I will feel more at ease when I know what he looks like, and maybe find out a thing or two about his personality, Lucy said as she unbuckled her seatbelt. Yeah. I understand. Good luck with that. I hope you show me his picture when you finally get it, Tom said with a polite smile as she opened the car door, getting set to get down. Maybe if you're nice I will show you. Remember, you can't tell anyone else about this. The last thing I want is for everyone in the company to find out about this. They would assume I got promoted because my best friend got engaged to the CEO's brother, and I don't want that, Lucy said with a frown, and Tom nodded in understanding. You don't have to worry, my lips are sealed, Tom promised and used his fingers to make a zipping gesture on his lips. She gave him a nod as she got out of the car. See you at lunchtime. He called out to her as she walked away, reminding her that she had asked him to have lunch with her the previous day. Lucy regretted doing that now, as she walked towards the building. She had made an impulsive decision the previous day, and now she couldn't back out of it. Although she intended to keep being nice to him, she wasn't sure she would be very comfortable with him in a closed space after all he had said. That he had acted properly during the drive to the office wasn't a guarantee that he would act properly during lunchtime. It had taken all the courage stored up in her reservoir to face Tom that morning. She didn't think she had any courage left to face her boss and then to face Tom too. Her lips curved in a smile when an idea suddenly occurred to her. Perhaps she could cancel lunch with Tom by telling him that the CEO said he doesn't want her having lunch with anyone around his office premises. She was certain the CEO was going to be a wet blanket after all. She would wait for Tom to bring her food as usual, and then she would tell him that he couldn't eat with her in her office. That should work, Lucy thought happily. Proud of herself for coming up with such a brilliant idea, she hummed a happy tune as she got into the elevator. Once she disappeared from his sight Tom dialed Brian's line. He listened to it ring for a while before it disconnected. He dialed Brian's number again, and the same thing happened. He kept dialing Brian's line as he waited for him to take his call. Why was Brian not taking his call? Tom wondered anxiously as he dialed Mia's line. Good morning, Mr. Hank, Mia greeted politely. Be no of calm, is there a reason my brother isn't taking his call? Tom asked, ignoring her greeting. Mia would have been offended but she could hear the worry in his voice so she answered, he is with his fiancée, so maybe he is busy. She asked, guessing that Brian had not told his family that it was a fake engagement. His fiancée. She is with him. Tom asked at the verge of panic. Yes. She arrived yesterday, Mia explained, making Tom panic even more. What if he was unable to reach Brian before his fiancée talked to him? How could Sonia have been on the phone a while ago, yet Brian wasn't close to his phone? He wondered irritably. Thank you. Please if you're able to reach him, do let him know I need to speak with him as soon as possible, Tom said before hanging up. 
he got out of the car and headed for his private elevator. He was just going to spend his time working on his disguise while waiting for Brian to give him a call. Chapter 64 Small World You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio Brian woke up the next morning with one hell of a headache, and he knew he was paying the price for drinking too much the previous evening. He sat up when he remembered why he had consumed so much alcohol. It was that green that I'd witch, he thought as he raised both hands to his head that was aching so badly as though it was going to fall off if he hung it at the wrong angle. He glanced to his side, expecting to see her lying on the bed next to him, but she wasn't there. Where could she have gone to? Had she left again, like she had done the last time? He wondered as he managed to get out of the bed. He walked into the living room, but there was no trace of her there. He checked the other two spare bedrooms but still did not see her. He had a worried frown on his face now as he returned to his bedroom. He decided to take pain medication for his head before going to search for her. Perhaps she had passed out somewhere. The last thing he wanted was for his fake fiancé to be found lying dead in his house. After taking the pain medication he wore a robe over the boxer shorts and yellow T-dot shirt which he was still wearing. He had no idea how his trousers had come off, but he was glad he hadn't woken up naked. The last thing he wanted was for the green-dot-eyed witch to tell him that they had sex and she was pregnant with his child. He heard the patio door open as he stepped out of the bedroom into the living room, and the green dot eyed witch cat walked into the living room dressed in a wet red dot colored bikini that clung to her body like a second skin, and a towel wrapped around her waist. Her long blonde hair was dripping wet, and she had a smile on her face as she looked at him. Good morning darling, she greeted with a cheerful smile as she walked up to him and kissed him on the lips before walking towards the bedroom. Brian didn't know what to say to her so he just followed her and watched as she let the towel fall on the floor before stepping into the walk. In bathroom with glass doors. A part of him was relieved that she hadn't left while he was sleeping as she had done the last time. Another part of him was worried, as he tried to figure out how long she intended to carry on with this madness. Darling, please do you mind getting my stuff from the car? She asked from the bathroom as she turned on the shower. Without saying a word Brian picked up his phone and the car keys and walked out of the bedroom. Once he was inside the elevator he scrolled through his phone to check the calls he had missed before dialing Matt's line, since he had missed Matt's call twice the previous evening, and once that morning. Hey. Where have you been? Matt asked in a concerned tone. Passed out on my bed, thanks to the green dot eyed witch, Brian said, and Matt chuckled. Green that I'd witch. Should I assume you are referring to your beautiful fiancé? Don't tell me you passed out after too many rounds of banging her, Matt asked in a teasing tone. I would rather cut off my dick than fuck that witch. I'd love to watch you eat your words, Matt said with a chuckle. Not going to happen, trust me. So when are you coming over? Brian asked impatiently as he put on his croc slippers and left the house, headed for the parking lot. Coming over. Matt repeated the question. Yeah. You promised to help me get rid of her, didn't you? If I remember correctly you're not very busy at the moment, so come over so you can meet her. I don't know how long she plans to be here, but I don't want to be alone with her, Brian pleaded. Are you sure about that? Matt asked thoughtfully. Trust me when I say I want nothing more than to put an end to this relationship and get her as far away from me as possible. So please leave whatever you are doing and come save a brother. Take this as a save my soul call, Brian pleaded as he automatically unlocked the car and raised Sonia's luggage out of the trunk. If you insist. I'll be there before sunset. Matt promised before hanging up. Brian decided to stay back and give Tom a call before returning inside. He had failed to check in on Tom to find out if he had accomplished his assignment the previous day. And he was yet to give him his assignment for the new day, Brian thought as he sat down at the edge of the open car trunk before dialing Tom's line. Great that you finally decided to give me a call. I was just about to send out a search party for you, Tom muttered irritably once he received the call. You seem to be in a foul mood, 
did something happen? Brian asked curiously since Tom was hardly the sort to lose his temper. Tom took in a deep breath to calm himself, you're not going to believe this. Even I find it difficult to believe, but it's true. Your fiancé just happens to be my girl's best friend, Tom said, sounding very anxious. What? You've got to be kidding me. Brian muttered in disbelief. How was that possible? It didn't even make sense. I wish I was. You know what this means, right? You have to get rid of my pictures or anything you have of me that could expose my identity, Tom said urgently. Hold on a minute, how is this possible? It doesn't even make any sense. Of all the girls in the world, that. Brian took in a deep breath to calm himself so as not to give himself away, you mean Sonia is your girl's best friend? Yeah. I'm just as surprised as you are, Tom said with a sigh, I hope you haven't told her anything about me yet. Tom asked hopefully. No, I haven't. But how did you find out? Brian asked curiously. I overheard them both talking over the phone, and Lucy asked her to find out what she could from you, Tom explained. Brian's eyes narrowed thoughtfully as he recalled snippets of Sonia's conversation with Lucy that first day he had met her. Sonia had mentioned the name, Tom. And he grinned when he remembered that she had said something about a neighbor with benefits, and he also remembered hearing her ask her friend to have sex with the handyman. So that handyman he had been feeling sorry for was his own brother. What a lovely twist. Hmm, small world, isn't it? Don't worry, I will do my best to keep your identity from her, Brian promised. So I suppose you know Lucy. Tom asked, making Brian raise a brow. I'm hearing the name for the first time today, Brian said without thinking. How come you don't know the name of your fiancé's best friend? I found out about Sonia the first night I spoke to Lucy. What do you spend time talking about if you don't even know the people who are close to her? Tom asked with disapproval, and Brian realized his error. Being the smart actor he was, he quickly came up with an answer, maybe I spend my time doing other fun things, rather than talking and that's why we are engaged now, Brian said jocularly making Tom chuckle. He knew he was going to have to tell Tom the truth about his false engagement to Sonia soon, else Sonia's bestie was going to beat him to it, and then Tom would likely get mad. But he couldn't tell Tom about it at the moment. The timing was wrong, and he needed to get back to Sonia with her luggage so she could find something to change into. Well, just make sure you get to know her unless of course, you'd like to get divorced as other celebrities do, Tom said, and he added, also, I'd like you to find out more about Lucy from her if you don't mind. Hmm. I will see what I can do. What about Lucy? How did it go with the assignment yesterday? Brian asked, and listened attentively as Tom told him all that happened the previous day, only leaving out their discussion in her apartment since he hadn't told her about their night together. He could only hope that she hadn't told Sonia about it, which he highly doubted. He prayed that Sonia wouldn't mention anything regarding that to Brian. Brilliant. So I suppose you're going to be dressing up today as the boss. Brian asked thoughtfully. That was what I was doing before you called, Tom said, looking at his reflection in the mirror. He had attached the fake beards and mustache already, and the wig was also positioned on his head. Good. Your assignment today. Have someone else deliver her lunch. Don't show up for it. If she calls don't respond either. Make sure whoever delivers her lunch tells her you are having lunch with someone else. Tom smiled, knowing that was the one step forward and two steps backward strategy which Lucy had talked about, I will do just that, he said with a nod. He had been trying to figure out the best way to apply her lesson, but now that Brian had given him the idea, it was simple. Chapter 65 Leg man you are listening at novelfull.audio. As soon as Brian was done returning all his missed phone calls, he picked up Sonia's luggage and returned to the house. Once he walked through the door he was welcomed by the aroma of scrambled eggs with bacon and an underlying aroma of coffee. The aroma was so pleasant and homely that it made him nostalgic. 
He left the luggage by the living room and followed the aroma to the kitchen. He stopped by the doorway when he saw Sonia dressed in one of his T-dot shirts. She had her back to the door as she prepared breakfast, while she rapped alongside Cardi B's song which was playing from her phone. He couldn't tell what she was wearing underneath the T-dot shirt, but her legs were endlessly long, smooth, and very attractive. His eyes lingered on her legs for a moment before he slowly lifted his gaze. Because she had her back to him his eyes fell on her long curly hair which was resting on her back. He could tell she had used his hairdryer since her hair which had been wet earlier, was dry now. As if he was being controlled by a remote, his eyes returned to her legs, and he imagined running his hands over it to see if they would feel as smooth as they looked. He looked up when he heard her clear her throat, and realized much to his embarrassment that she had turned around while he was staring at her legs and he hadn't even noticed. Sonia's eyes gleamed with amusement as he met her gaze, I take it you are a leg man. Brian wore an aloof expression on his face, your luggage is in the living room, he said in an indifferent tone. He had no intention of letting her believe he was sexually attracted to her. He wasn't. It had just been a while since he last had a woman with him, and he was certain he wouldn't give her legs a second glance once he satisfied himself. So he wanted to pretend like she hadn't just caught him checking her out. Cool. For a moment there, I thought you got into your car and ran away, Sonia said in an easy voice. I can't say the thought didn't exactly cross my mind. But I couldn't just run away dressed like this. Won't be good for my reputation, Brian responded flashing her a smile that didn't quite reach his eyes. Sonia threw back her head and laughed gaily, making him think that she seemed to laugh a lot. He made a mental note to search Google for mental disorders that made people laugh a lot. That could be a lead. Maybe she was a psychopath like Joker. You see that? That right there is the reason I'm so drawn to you. You are so hilariously funny, my love, Sonia said before returning her attention to what she was doing. Brian had a smirk on his face as he walked over to the coffee maker and poured himself a cup of coffee. She was drawn to him because he was funny, huh? He couldn't wait to see what she would think about Matt. The guy was the real comedian and charmer between them. Brian sat on one of the seats in the kitchen and sipped his coffee very slowly as he watched her move around his kitchen as if she owned the place. Seeing how she ignored his presence, he assumed she probably thought he had left, but she proved him wrong when she turned to look at him, I suppose your cook and cleaners will be resuming today, right? She asked curiously. Dot, why? Don't tell me you are already tired of strutting around my home like you own the place. Brian drawled as he nursed the cup of coffee on his hands. Trust me, I'm not. At least, not yet. I will be using one of your spare rooms as my workroom for the duration of my stay here. So I just need to know which of the bedrooms is available, Sonia said, looking at him expectantly. You can have the room at the end of the hall. How long do you intend to stay for? He asked the question that had been on his mind since he saw her luggage. Although he didn't like her very much, it felt good to have someone with him in the house that he could talk to. I don't know yet. I guess we will both have to wait and see, she said with a sweet smile, and Brian nodded. That best friend you talked about yesterday, what is her name? Brian asked, trying to subtly extract information from her. Lucy. Why do you ask? Sonia asked curiously. Perhaps his brother had found out about his employee being besties with his future sister. In. Law. She wouldn't put it past these wealthy people to dig around other people's lives. Nothing really serious. I'm just wondering if she is anything like you. I wonder how she puts up with a. A person like you, Brian said, making Sonia giggle. Lucy is completely different from me, don't worry. She is the sane and sweet one between us. Maybe that is why we are best of friends, Sonia said with a wide smile as she thought of Lucy. Thank goodness. He couldn't imagine his cool brother having to be in a relationship with someone as crazy as Sonia. Tom would never survive it, that's good. I hope I get to meet her someday, 
Brian said, making Sonia narrow her eyes suspiciously. Why? Are you really asking me that? Isn't she the best friend of the love of my life? What sort of a fiancé would I be if I don't meet someone who is that important to you? Brian asked, making Sonia giggle. Love of your life. One minute you are talking to me like I'm a nutcase and the next minute you're calling me the love of your life. You need to stick to a script, darling, Sonia said with an amused smile. Brian dropped his cup on the counter closest to him, and took a few steps in her direction, covering the space between them as he stopped in front of her. He said nothing as he looked down at her and into her mischievous green eyes, I told you I was going to be the doting fiancé, didn't I? Being the doting fiancé doesn't mean I no longer think you are a nutcase. He whispered to her as he reached out a hand and tucked her hair behind her ear, without taking his eyes away from hers. Sonia held his gaze but said nothing as she waited to see what he was going to do next. Brian leaned forward and brought his face closer to hers, making her blink involuntarily. She swallowed when he brushed his soft lips on hers, making her heart flutter. By the way, my best friend is coming over today. I want him to meet you, Brian whispered over her lips before taking a step back. What was he up to? She wondered as her eyes narrowed into slits, Matt. I see you know him already, Brian said in an impressed tone. Just how much research had she done for her to know the names of almost everyone associated with him? Brian mused. Even your devoted fans know him. How can you expect your fiancé not to know him? Sonia asked making a clucking sound with her tongue as she turned away from him to serve the breakfast into a dish. Brian raised a brow when she sat down to eat, and he realized she had served everything for herself and had left nothing for him. He opened his mouth to say something about it but snapped it shut as his ego wouldn't let him admit that he wanted a taste of the food. Sonia ate in silence for a while, expecting him to at least say something or ask if she wasn't going to offer him breakfast. When he didn't, she raised her head to look at him and met his glaring eyes. If eyes could kill, she was sure she would be lying lifeless on the floor by now, Sonia thought in amusement. She flashed him a smile when she remembered Lucy's request. Perhaps she could stylishly ask him about his siblings and find out the little she could about his brother. By the way, you have two siblings, right? She asked, making Brian snort. Did she really think she had any right to ask him questions right now after choosing to starve him in his own house? Brian thought in disbelief, and without responding to her question he stood up and walked over to the sink where he emptied the rest of his coffee and rinsed the cup before walking out of the kitchen. He decided to just use the time to go around his house and see if he had any picture of Tom around somewhere. He picked up Sonia's luggage from the spot he had left it earlier and carried it to the bedroom at the end of the hall. He had no intention of sharing his closet with her. Chapter 66 First glimpse you are listening at NovelFull.audio After his conversation with Brian, Tom decided to leave his costume for later, since he didn't want to go through the stress of wearing it now and taking it off later to go get lunch for Lucy, and then wearing it again. He had thought of asking Harry to send someone to deliver lunch to Lucy on his behalf, but he had decided against that since it would not only stir suspicion among the staff but would also defeat the purpose of the whole thing. It wouldn't make sense if Harry was to ask one of the staff to deliver lunch to Lucy and have them tell her that it was from her driver who was too busy with another lady to bring her lunch up to her. Tom let out a sigh as he glanced at the large wall clock which was hanging on the wall directly opposite his seat. He still had about two hours before lunchtime. Perhaps he could just change now and then take off the costume during lunch break. The costume was more for Lucy's benefit than his and there would be no need for her to come to his office twice in a day. Once he made up his mind he stood up from his seat and walked into his mini-bedroom where he had kept the costumes. Thankfully he had practiced enough within the last hour, so dressing you wasn't very difficult. When he was done putting on his costume, he dialed Harry's line and asked him to meet him in his office. Less than five minutes later Harry walked into the office and stopped by Lucy's desk, the CEO is in his office now, I'm going in to have a word with him, Harry said politely before unlocking Tom's office door and walking inside. 
He shut the door behind him and stared at Tom for some seconds with his head cocked to the side as though he was trying to find faults. What do you think? Tom asked impatiently. I don't think she will recognize you. You look boring, Harry said with a grin, and Tom glared at him, I think you should wear the glasses too. It will complete the look, Harry added thoughtfully, making Tom pick up the glasses which was on his desk. Now you're good to go, Harry said with a nod of approval after Tom had put on the glasses, this is exactly what a weird boss like you should look like, he said with an amused chuckle as he took out his phone to snap a picture. You seem to be having too much fun, don't you think? Tom observed with a slightly raised brow. Yeah. It's not every day you see a full dot grown man doing something this crazy, Harry said as he took some snapshots and then returned his phone to his pocket. Whatever. Harry chuckled, if that's all, I should return to my office. I have to attend a meeting on behalf of the CEO who is on leave of his senses, Harry said as he headed for the door, I suppose you're ready to meet your assistant. He asked once he got to the door. Send her in, Tom said, choosing to ignore Harry's taunt. Meanwhile, at the other end of the door, Lucy kept staring at the laptop screen in front of her with a distant look in her eyes. Never had she been more distracted in her life than she was at the moment. Ever since she got into her office that morning, her mind had wandered from Tom to her boss and then back again, taking turns each time. Even though she had made up her mind to friend zone Tom, it seemed like her brain had a mind of its own, and kept replaying everything he had said to her the previous evening. The memories made butterflies flutter in her belly each time the thought crossed her mind. Especially the memory of him squatting in front of her, and grazing her lower lip with his thumb. On the other hand, her thoughts concerning her boss were completely different. She had initially been asking herself a lot of questions and trying to figure him out. What did he look like? What kind of personality did he have? Was he going to try to make things difficult for her? When would he get to the office? And then after Harry informed her that the CEO was in the office, her heartbeat had doubled, and now her palms were sweaty as she stared at the screen with unseeing eyes. Between her driver and her boss, she was sure she was going to get a heart attack if she continued this way. Dot she snapped out of her thoughts when she heard the doorknob turn and she saw Harry step out of the office. She quickly stood up when he approached her desk, it's time for you to catch your first glimpse of the CEO. He wants to see you now, he said, making her stomach churn. Harry looked at her for a brief moment, and he almost smiled when he noticed how tense she seemed. If only she knew how much trouble his mad friend was putting himself through just for her sake, she wouldn't be so nervous, Harry mused. He looked forward to seeing how this whole madness would end though. You should breathe, he suggested, making Lucy realize that she had been holding her breath. She gave him a nod as she took in a deep breath and let it out slowly. Don't worry. He doesn't bite. Unless he is very upset, Harry added with a straight face before walking away, leaving Lucy to wonder whether if that was meant to be a joke, or he was serious. She glanced at the door as if a wild animal was positioned behind it, waiting to attack her, calm down. Just calm down, she whispered to herself a couple of times before heading for the door. She paused to adjust her suit jacket and quickly patted her hair to make sure it was well arranged before knocking on the door very lightly. Even though he had requested for her, she still believed that was the polite thing to do, since she had no idea what he was doing. Hearing the knock, Tom's brow creased in a frown as he glanced at the door. He had expected her to just walk in since he had sent for her. Did she really expect him to respond and invite her in? Even after he had told her that he didn't like talking but preferred to communicate through texts and emails. He was just going to ignore her. Perhaps if he failed to respond, she would realize he had no intention of speaking. Lucy stood there waiting for him to invite her in, but when she didn't hear anything after some time, she shut her eyes as she reluctantly reached for the doorknob and turned it. Chapter 67 Anita you are listening at novelfull.audio Once Lucy walked out of Tom's office she heaved a deep sigh of relief as she collapsed into her seat. She just realized one thing. 
calling the CEO a weirdo didn't cut it at all. That was a very big understatement. As a matter of fact, she now believed that calling him a weirdo seemed like a very big compliment for someone like him. He was worse than a weirdo. Why had he called her into his office if he had no intention of saying a word to her? She had just stood there like a statue, staring down at her feet while trying hard not to raise her head to look at him just in case he was watching her. She had stood there by the door with her head bowed, for what seemed like forever until he tapped on his desk to get her attention. She had managed to raise her head a little to look at him, hoping he would at least say something to her, but the weirdo had only waved her off, but not without turning away so she wouldn't see his face. Luckily she had caught a glimpse of the side of his face in time before he turned away from her completely. At least she now had an idea of what he looked like. The color of his hair, and many beards. The most annoying thing she had discovered was the fact that he wore glasses. To think that he had stopped her from using her glasses whereas he was also wearing glasses. She had no idea whether the glasses were medicated or not. She didn't care. He had no right to wear glasses after asking her to not wear her medicated glasses. Right now all she could do was wish every lady who was interested in him good luck. She intended to give Sonia a call later and tell her to get rid of any idea she had in her head about them marrying both brothers. Not that she had any intention of getting married to anyone, but even if she had slightly entertained the thought because of Sonia and her family, she would rather die than have anything to do with a person like her boss. Inside the CEO's office, Tom chuckled as he walked over to the door and locked it with his key before taking off his wig and glasses. She seemed really terrified of him. He had watched her all the while she stood there with her head bowed, and he could swear he had seen her hands tremble for a moment. How was he supposed to seduce her if she was this scared of him? Tom winced when he felt his head throb painfully and raised a hand to his temple before looking at the wig with a frown. He couldn't help but wonder how some ladies coped with wearing wigs when his head ached this way only after wearing it for only a couple of minutes. He walked into his closet and took off everything, including the suit he had worn over his shirt. Once he was sure everything was in place and he looked like Tom the bad boy again, he returned to attend to some documents on his desk. By the time he was done with the first document in front of him, it was lunchtime. He dropped his pen at once and pushed his seat away from the desk before standing up. A part of him really wanted to share lunch with her, but he knew he needed to do as Brian had suggested if he wanted more from her than just a friendly lunch. Bearing that in mind, he took his private elevator and exited the building before walking around his private car park to the entrance of the building which everyone else used. Once he entered inside the building, he observed that most of the staff were already heading to the cafeteria, so he joined them. Wow! Isn't he hot? One of the ladies whispered to her friend when they sighted Tom walking towards the cafeteria from a different direction. I think I'm going to say hi to him during lunch today, another whispered to her friend excitedly. A beautiful blonde lady who was walking not too far away from the ladies, glanced in Tom's direction when she heard them whispering about him, and she raised a perfectly arched brow when she saw the familiar face, Tom. She called out loud in a questioning tone since she wasn't sure he was the one. Tom paused and turned in her direction when he heard the familiar voice, and raised a brow when he saw Anita smiling and waving at him. What was she doing here? He wondered as he remained where he was, and waited for her to walk up to him. It is really you. I almost didn't believe it. Anita said excitedly as she joined him, and smiled when she noticed the envious glances she was receiving from the other ladies. Why are you here? Tom asked impatiently. Beov, come on. That is no way to talk to me. Why don't we talk over lunch? You look very different by the way, she said with a pleasant smile that suggested it was a good kind of different. Without waiting for him to say anything she slid her right arm under his left arm and dragged him along with her towards the cafeteria. Tom who was wondering what she was doing in his company premises allowed her to lead the way until they got to a table and she sat down. Excuse me for a moment, he said in a polite tone before walking away from her to where the food was being served. 
He wasn't going to let Lucy starve simply because he was talking to someone as insignificant as Anita. Once he got Lucy's lunch, he looked around the cafeteria until his eyes fell on the lady he recognized to be Lucy's secretary, and he approached her table with the lunch pack. Hi. Could you please help me deliver this to Miss Perry in her office? Let her know I couldn't deliver it myself because I'm having lunch with someone, Tom said, as he jerked his head towards Anita. Although he tried to make it sound like a humble request, it still came out like an order, and Lucy's secretary gave him a quick nod as she took the lunch pack from him and stood up to do as he had asked. Thank you, Tom said before walking away. Once he returned to the table where Anita was seated he pulled out the seat opposite her and sat down. So what are you doing here? Tom asked again, wondering why she hadn't bothered to go get her meal while he was away. Anita had thought he went to get their meal when he excused himself, but seeing him return empty.handed she tried not to let her disappointment show. Well, as you might have heard, I.Global recently took over Ocean's Airline, the company where I work, so some of us were invited here for a meeting with Mr. Harry, Anita explained. Although she had been hoping to meet the CEO. How could he have missed such a significant detail? Although he had already started bidding for Ocean's Airline before he met Anita, he couldn't remember her mentioning she worked there. That was probably because she had deliberately kept it away from him for reasons best known to her. I see, Tom said disinterestedly. Chapter 68 Besties you are listening at NovelFull.audio Lucy checked her wristwatch impatiently for the third time as she waited for Tom to show up with her lunch. She thought about giving him a call to find out what was keeping him but remembered that she didn't even have his phone number. How could she call him her friend when she didn't have his number? She made a mental note to exchange numbers with him when he brings her lunch. It wasn't like she couldn't go down to get her own lunch, but somehow her mind was becoming programmed to expect him to deliver it. When he comes she would just tell him how she had caught a glimpse of the boss and tell him what she thought the CEO looks like. And then she would ask him to leave before the boss comes out. She still had no intention of allowing him to eat with her. Who knew if his madness comes only when they were eating together? Her thoughts were interrupted when a knock sounded on the door, and she looked up when the door was pushed open, expecting to see Tom, but her brows creased when her secretary walked in, instead of Tom. Yes. She asked as she looked at her secretary in confusion, wondering why she was in her office with a lunch pack. Your driver asked me to bring this to you. He is having lunch with someone, so he couldn't bring it up himself, she explained, making Lucy's brow furrow. He asked you to bring this to me. Yes ma'am, the secretary said with a nod. Who is he having lunch with? Male or female? Lucy asked thoughtfully, thinking that he was probably having lunch with the lady he liked, and this might be her chance to find out who the lady was, and what she looked like. Female. A staff. Lucy asked making the secretary wonder if something was going on between Lucy and her driver, or perhaps Lucy was just upset that her driver had chosen not to deliver her lunch because B was busy with someone else. I don't know. I don't know all the staff in the company, she answered politely. Thank you. You can leave now, Lucy said dismissively and tried to stay calm long enough for the secretary to have left the hallway before picking up the lunch pack and rushing out of her office in the direction of the elevator. She needed to be fast before they would both leave the cafeteria. Once she got out of the elevator she looked around, wondering where the cafeteria was, and then she noticed some of the staff coming from a particular direction, she decided the cafeteria had to be in that direction, so she walked in that direction, trying not to attract any attention to herself. She didn't need to spend a lot of time looking around before she spotted Tom at one end of the hall seated with a beautiful blonde lady. He was seated with his back to the entrance, while the lady was directly facing Lucy. Seeing the lady's bare legs which were crossed under the table, Lucy could tell she was wearing a pretty short skirt. Was this his taste in women? She wondered as she watched them converse from the distance. I suppose you were coming here to have lunch. You should go and get something for yourself, Tom suggested, wanting to take his leave. Anita raised a brow very slightly. 
the Tom she knew would have offered to help her get her lunch like the gentleman he was. It seemed like his physical appearance wasn't the only thing that had changed about him, what about you? Don't you want to get something for yourself? Anita asked with a curious smile. No. I only came here to get lunch for my boss. And now that I've done that I need to attend to something else, Tom said, waiting for her to take the clue. His boss. So he worked here. Let's talk for a bit before you leave, okay? It's not like we are enemies, even though you dumped me, she said with a small smile. Tom leaned back in his seat and looked at her without saying a word as he waited to hear what she wanted to talk about. Taking his silence as a go dot ahead, she asked, so what about you? What are you doing here? I'm one of the company's drivers, Tom said in a flat tone, making her wrinkle her nose in disapproval. She had been expecting something better. How typical, Tom thought in his head. He had noticed how her attitude towards him had changed from the moment he told her he was a handyman. She had taken their relationship for granted because she thought he was a mere handyman, and now she was going to be under his payroll. How funny. He wondered how she was going to react when she finally gets to know his true identity. I don't suppose you are the CEO's driver, are you? She asked hopefully, leaning forward to hear his response. No. But I drive his personal assistant, Tom said, and Anita pursed her lips as though she was thinking about it. Dot after a while, she shrugged, not bad. I guess you must have seen the CEO then. Anita asked hopefully, making Tom narrow his eyes. No. Why? Nothing. Just curious, she said, flashing him a smile. It wouldn't be a very wise idea to tell her supposed ex that she wanted to meet the CEO and seduce him. At least not yet. She looked at Tom with pursed lips as she tried to decide whether to stick to him until she found out all she could about the CEO from him, or offer to pay him a huge sum of money for him to help her meet the CEO. Is the CEO's personal assistant a male or female? She asked in a casual tone. A lady. A very beautiful young lady, Tom added as he watched her. Anita seemed like a pretty ambitious person, so he could guess that she was probably nursing ideas of meeting the CEO and getting involved with him. Well, if that was what she was thinking, he hoped she wouldn't waste too much time on her pipe dream. Anita smiled at him. She had no problem with his personal assistant being beautiful or young. She was just as beautiful and young too, and as such couldn't be intimidated by that. If the CEO's personal assistant was anything like her, by now their marriage would have made the first page of the tabloids, but it seemed like the CEO's personal assistant wasn't interested in him, or she probably just wasn't his type. Anita decided she was just going to become best friends with the CEO's personal assistant, since all she wanted was an opportunity to meet the CEO. Hopefully, the lady would be her ticket to meeting Thomas Hanks. How is Snow? Tom asked for lack of anything else to say. Anita smiled at the mention of her pet, he is very fine. That's good to know. It's nice seeing you again, Tom said as he started to pull back his seat from the table. Don't tell me you are leaving already. Anita asked with a frown. I am. Have a nice day, Tom said as politely as he could muster before standing up and walking away from the table without giving Anita the chance to say anything else. Once Lucy saw Tom getting out of his seat, she quickly hurried away so he wouldn't see her, and hid in a corner until he left. Judging by the way the lady had been smiling while talking to Tom, Lucy couldn't tell if this was the lady he liked, or perhaps she was one of those ladies who wanted him, and he was using to mislead the lady he liked as she had advised. Whoever the lady was, she was going to become friends with her and every other lady she sees around Tom. That way he would think twice before trying to initiate anything amorous between them. Once she was certain he had left for real, Lucy returned to the cafeteria. She was glad when she saw Anita heading for her seat with a tray of food. She took a moment to think about the best way to approach Anita, and then decided to just do the natural thing since she was carrying her lunch pack. She took in a deep breath before approaching Anita's table, hi. 
Chapter 69 That's so cool you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Once Tom returned to his office he dialed Harry's line and asked him to meet him in his office at once. The first thing Harry noticed when he walked into the office was Lucy's absence, and the next was the frown on Tom's face, did you send your assistant out? The crease on Tom's brow deepened, Lucy. No. Why? Tom asked curiously. I'm just surprised that she isn't on her seat. You know she hardly leaves her office, so I was just wondering where she went to. Anyway, why did you send for me? Harry asked, changing the subject. Call her and find out where she went to, Tom instructed. Or did her secretary fail to deliver the lunch as he instructed, and she went to get her meal? Tom wondered. Okay, Harry said and dialed Lucy's line. Lucy who was just about to introduce herself to Anita, paused when her phone started ringing and she noticed the call was from Harry, excuse me, she said to Anita as she turned away from her. Hello, sir, Harry placed the call on loudspeaker, Miss Perry, the CEO would like to know why you're not on your seat, he said, making Lucy's heart skip a beat. Was it just her, or did everyone else feel this way each time the CEO's name was mentioned? Lucy wondered. Maybe it was because of how harsh he had been the first time they had spoken. I only stepped out to have lunch at the cafeteria, Lucy explained, trying hard not to stutter as she spoke. Hold on, Harry said before placing the call on mute and looking at Tom, she said she is having lunch at the cafeteria, Harry explained. I'm not deaf. Didn't her secretary deliver the lunch I sent to her? Tom asked Harry with a frown, and Harry rolled his eyes before unmuting the call. I thought I saw your secretary taking a lunch pack to your office. Harry asked, and Lucy winced. Yes, she did. I wasn't sure the CEO would appreciate me eating in the office so I decided to eat at the cafeteria, Lucy lied, and Harry nodded. Okay then, you should hurry up and get back to your office. In case of next time, you can eat in your office, I'm sure the CEO prefers that to you being so far away from him, Harry said before hanging up. Now that we've cleared that up, why did you call me? Harry asked curiously. I ran into Anita at the cafeteria a moment ago, Tom said, making Harry frown. Anita. What was she doing here? Don't tell me she found out about you. Harry asked with round eyes. Harry had only heard of Anita but he had never met her since Tom felt it would be suspicious for a handyman like him to present someone like Harry as his friend. She didn't find out about me, but according to her she came here to have a meeting with Mr. Harry, Tom said, and it finally clicked in Harry's head. Don't tell me Miss Miller from Ocean's Airline is your Anita. Harry asked in surprise. First of all, she is an M.Y. Anita. To answer your question, yes. Her name is Anita Miller. What is her role in Ocean Airlines? Is she someone we can relieve of her duties? Tom asked, making Harry raise a brow. You're not someone to mix business with pleasure, apart from your recent craziness, though. So why are you thinking of doing that? Harry asked. I'm not mixing business with pleasure. I'm only trying to avoid the kind of trouble I think someone like her might bring with her. So answer my question, Tom repeated. Unfortunately, you can't avoid this trouble. If you remember correctly, Mr. Wyatt gave you some conditions before agreeing to sell Ocean Airlines to you, and one of them includes the names of some staff you have to retain. She is on the top of the list, and that is why I decided to meet with them to know them personally, Harry explained. I suppose you found out what her relationship is with Mr. Wyatt. Tom asked, knowing that Harry would have done all of that before inviting her over. Harry gave him a nod of agreement, sure. She is his niece, so you can see that you can't fire her. At least not yet, and not without a very good reason, Harry added. I see. And what do you think about her? I mean professionally. I think she is very intelligent and ambitious, although she kept asking about the CEO, Harry said with a grin. Yeah, she asked me too, Tom said with a sigh, making Harry chuckle. 
now I know why you're worried. Anyway, I will keep my eyes on her, don't worry too much, and just focus on goofing around, since that seems to be your specialty this period, Harry said with a chuckle as he headed for the door. You're lucky you're my best friend, else you'd be out of the job by now, Tom muttered under his breath, making Harry turn to look at him. No. I think you are the lucky one. Who else would be able to have your back as I do? Ha. Huh. Harry asked with a cocky smile. Just get out of my sight before I fire you, Tom threatened. Please do. That way I can finally tell Miss Perry all that my mouth has been itching to tell her before I retire. I will also sing to Anita all that she needs to know about the CEO. That would surely keep you busy, Harry said with a wink before walking away. Meanwhile, at the cafeteria, both ladies were staring at each other, and Anita had a big smile on her face as she wondered what luck had dragged her newest bestie to her table. She had been surprised when Lucy had asked if she could join her table because she didn't like to eat alone. But she had been even more surprised when Lucy introduced herself. So you're saying you are the CEO's personal assistant? She asked Lucy, just to be certain it wasn't a misunderstanding. Yeah. I resumed the office just a few days ago, Lucy explained, wondering why the lady seemed more excited about her position than she was. That's so cool. So I guess Tom is your driver. Anita asked as she sized up Lucy with her eyes even though a smile was pasted on her lips. She had to admit that Lucy was as beautiful as Tom had hinted, but she could also tell that Lucy was naive. Yes, he is. He's a very nice guy, isn't he? Lucy asked with a wide smile. Sure he is, Anita agreed with a nod. A very nice guy, but not just for her. She could do better than a driver. How do you know Tom? Is he your friend? Lucy asked curiously. There was no way she was going to tell Lucy that Tom was her ex, I won't exactly call him a friend. He is just someone I know, Anita said with a smile. Someone she knows. Did that mean she was the one? Lucy thought excitedly, I see. So what about you? I mean your department in the company, Lucy asked, shifting the topic from Tom. I dot Global Airline. Formerly called Ocean Airline, Anita explained. Oh. Maybe this explained why Tom didn't know her name or her department. Because she wasn't stationed here. Why was she at the cafeteria then? I didn't realize the staff there now had their office here, Lucy said with a small smile. No, we don't. We just had a meeting with Mr. Harry, and I decided to grab lunch before leaving, Anita explained, and Lucy smiled in understanding. By the way, do you know I always thought that any lady that works directly with the CEO must be the luckiest woman in the world. How do you feel about working for him? Don't you just love him? Anita asked with an innocent smile, wanting to know what Lucy really thought about the CEO. Lucky. I don't know about that. Heaven knows I'd gladly let someone else take the job, if the CEO permits it, Lucy said, making Anita raise a brow. Why? Is he not your type? I'm just not interested in him that way, Lucy said with a shake of her head, and Anita relaxed before giving Lucy her first genuine smile. Now that she was sure Lucy wasn't a competition, she could work on becoming friends with her. Chapter 70 Brian or Matt? You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Brian was standing outside the guest bedroom which Sonia was using with his hand raised mid-air as though he was trying to knock. Ever since Sonia disappeared inside the bedroom after she had her breakfast she was yet to come out, and it was almost 5 p.m. already. Was that how she worked? Or was she sleeping? He wondered. Not that he liked her anyway, but even her unwelcome presence was presence too, and better than the absence and loneliness in the house. He had tried keeping himself busy with one of her books as he had done before, but it seemed like since his brain was aware that the author of the book was around, his brain didn't want to pay attention to anything in the book. Thankfully the sound of his front door being opened informed him that Matt was around. He quickly hurried away from there. 
Sonia could stay there for as long as she liked, that was her business. As long as he now had company, all was well with his world again. Where is she? Matt whispered immediately Brian stepped into the living room to welcome him. She is in one of the guest bedrooms, let's go to the poolside, Brian whispered back as he followed Matt into the other spare bedroom and they dropped his luggage there. After leaving his luggage in the bedroom they headed for the poolside, where they both sat down on the recliner chairs there, with straw hats over their head to shield them from the rays of the evening sun, and a glass of wine in their hands. So come on, give me all the details of everything that happened between you both since she arrived, Matt suggested as he sipped from his wine. Nothing much. She asked me to take her to my favorite fun place, and I took her to SG. You did. But that isn't your favorite fun place. As a matter of fact, you avoid that place because you don't want the reputation that goes with it, so why did you? Oh. Unless you wanted to scare her. Matt asked in amusement when it finally occurred to him, did it work? Unfortunately, it happens to be her favorite fun place, Brian said with a wry smile which made Matt hoot with laughter, and some of the wine in his glass spilled on the grey dot-colored shirt he was wearing. You have got to be kidding me. Matt said as he dropped his glass on the table between them and kept laughing. I kid you not. That which is just not anything a normal person should be. Anyway, I found out the club wasn't really as evil as people made it sound. Their strippers are extra sexy and give a very good show, Brian said with a grin. You mean she allowed you to do all of that? Matt asked, his mouth agape. Allowed. She actually invited the strippers herself. I told you she isn't normal, didn't I? Brian asked, and Matt whistled in confusion. Isn't she just every man's dream woman? I really want to meet her now, he said with an impressed smile on his face. Every man's dream woman. I don't know about every man, but I do know she is nothing like mine, Brian said confidently as he nursed his glass of wine. Come on, quit pretending. I'm very sure a part of you is intrigued by her. You are only annoyed that her presence in your life is making things difficult for you, Matt pointed out with a grin. Brian decided to change the subject and ignore what Matt said, I need you to do me a favor, will you? Brian said making Matt cock a brow. I know this might sound crazy, but don't say no outrightly until you think about it. No. Matt said with a shake of his head. Ha. Huh. Brian asked in confusion, wondering why he was saying no when he was yet to hear what he wanted to say. You heard me. I've given you the answer already. The fact that you think it might sound crazy, means it is actually crazy and that is a big red flag. I'm not thinking about it, Matt said stubbornly as he picked up his glass of wine and sipped from it again. You should at least hear what it is first, Brian hissed at him. Since I know it's going to sound crazy, and I won't do it, there's no point in listening to anything about it. I'm hungry now, what do you have in the kitchen? Matt asked as he stood up ready to return inside the house. How can you call yourself my best friend if you can't even hear me out or do me this favor? Brian asked in annoyance. You're the one who announced to the world that we were best friends. I didn't so that emotional blackmail won't fly, Matt said as he kept walking while Brian followed him. There is no food, you'll have to order for something, Brian said grudgingly making Matt stop in his track to look at Brian. Are you starving your guest? It's not like I invited her, but she's the one starving me. You won't believe she prepared breakfast for just herself this morning, Brian said incredulously. I would do the same if I was in her shoes, Matt said with a TSK, before walking away with both hands dipped in his pocket. Once they opened the screen door and walked inside the house, Sonia walked out of the kitchen with an apron draped around her neck, and a radiant smile on her face, hello Matt. She greeted as she stepped forward to embrace him, making Brian narrow his eyes. What was she up to? Wow. You look so stunning in person that I'm about to go blind, Matt said, raising his hands to cover his eyes. Sonia giggled at that, save the flattery for someone else. I'm sorry I wasn't out to welcome you when you got here. 
I had no idea you were here already. I was very busy until I remembered he mentioned something about you coming over, so I came out to fix something dinner, Sonia explained, making Matt turn to glare at Brian, before taking Sonia's hands in his and raising it to his lips. My loyalty is to you, my queen, Matt said, and Sonia giggled some more, while Brian scowled at the traitor he called his friend. You know, I was coming inside to find something to eat, but since you're trying to fix something already, just tell me what I can do. That way we can get to know each other while we cook, Matt suggested, and Sonia nodded eagerly as she intertwined her arm with his and they both walked to the kitchen like they've been best friends forever. So tell me something, did he invite you over to help him kick me out? Sonia asked, for Matt's ears only. Matt looked down at her, surprised that she had put the dots together so quickly, why would you think that? He asked, trying to sound like he was shocked because of the absurdity of her question. Come on, Matt, don't insult me, Sonia said, looking at him with a wide smile. It was obvious to him that Sonia was more intelligent than they were giving her credit for, so he chuckled instead, what if he did, take a good look at me, Matt, do I look like the type to be kicked out? You shouldn't waste your time plotting any nonsense with him. I'm the writer amongst us three, and you both are the actors, don't you think you should leave all the plotting to me? Sonia asked with a confident smile. Now Matt felt really sorry for his best friend. It was obvious Brian had bitten more than he could chew, and unfortunately, he had no one to blame for his folly, why are you doing this? Matt asked Sonia curiously as she moved away from him to set everything she needed to fix dinner. I don't think I can trust you with such information yet. But what I can assure you is that I do not have any evil intentions towards your friend. So let's all live together peacefully, for the time being, okay? Sonia asked with an outstretched hand. Fair enough, Matt said as he shook her hand, now that we've gotten that out of the way, I'm really hungry, what I can do? He asked, and soon they both got busy with preparing dinner and getting to know each other. Brian who was seated in the living room gritted his teeth each time he heard either of them laugh out loud. He had been happy that Matt was going to be here to keep him company, but he seemed to be enjoying his time with Sonia a little too much. He cocked his head when something occurred to him, was it possible that this was part of Matt's plan to get Sonia off him? Maybe he could also utilize the situation and get pictures of them, that way he would have evidence to show that Sonia was flirting with his friend. He picked up his phone and just as he was about to stand up and head to the kitchen, his phone beeped with an Instagram notification message, and he opened it to see that Sonia had once again tagged him to some photos. A sigh escaped from his lips when he saw the pictures of Sonia and Matt who was also now wearing a similar apron with Sonia, standing beside each other with Sonia's hand on Matt's waist, and goofy smiles on their faces. The caption was actually what made him sigh, both best friends are so adorable that I'm having a hard time sticking to just Brian, I think I might be falling for Matt. Who is your favorite? Brian or Matt? He checked the comments and threw his phone on the couch when he saw so many us with hearts. She was definitely a witch. There was no convincing him otherwise.